My initial thoughts and impressions of Moore are that Moore is an extraordinary school and it's unique in the higher education landscape. What Moore does so beautifully is to explicitly recognize and articulate that the same attributes that create brilliant artists, such as the ability to innovate, creative thinking, problem solving, the ability to develop a vision, those are the same attributes that shape excellent and strong leaders. The women who are honored with the Visionary Women Awards are women who have made an impact not only in their field, but in the world. My work takes me often to really extreme environments in pursuit of understanding how an individual defines a sense of themselves. They are people who have demonstrated integrity and authenticity in their work. I'm not bothered by what other people think because I know my truest path it's just to make the work. And they are people who our students look up to and admire. She takes such a role in like advocacy in such an interesting way that it makes me think, what can I do in my own art to raise awareness, and ask things about the human condition? Joyce Scott and Janet Biggs are both artists who show us that through speaking your truth, you can impact others and you can shape the world around you. We're so proud that Janet is an alum of Moore and Janet exemplifies what we aim to do here with the Moore education, the ability to experiment, the ability to explore, and maybe most of all, the self-confidence to delve into new areas and to shape new ways of making art. When I was a little girl, I ended up going to the World's Fair and saw the Pieta, and I just would not move, and kept back walking to just stare into this statue that was extraordinary. I'm not sure I really had the consciousness at three to be able to say, I want to do this for the rest of my life, but it certainly gave me, you know, my first glimpse into what a creative existence is and what it can produce. My name is Janet Biggs. I'm an interdisciplinary artist. I actually navigate the territory between art and science, also between technology and poetry. I express myself the best in really immersive installations. And my work takes me often to really extreme environments from inside of active volcanoes in the Horn of Africa or in Indonesia to the Taklamakan Desert of Western China. And I've spent a whole lot of time filming in the Arctic and also the Antarctic. I start the work sort of like a documentary filmmaker. I'll define where it is I'm going, what I want to film, and then once I get there, you know, I kind of purposefully push myself sideways, and that's when possibility happens. Janet is like a really accomplished artist. It's really cool just seeing her process. The way that her art takes science and logic and kind of molds them together was really interesting to me because I feel like design is something that's more logic-based as well, like graphic design in general. So it's really cool seeing a medium that was also a little bit more logical, but still part of the art world. My name is Bella Piacentini. I will be a senior in the fall at Moore College of Art and Design, and I am a graphic design major with a business minor. How do your passions influence your work? Um, I, you know, they are my work. <laughs> that I could make something creative without being absolutely passionate about uh, the exploration it is impossible for me to even imagine. I mean, it, it is just part of the whole creative process for me. When I first started looking at individuals in front of my camera, I was gravitating towards athletes. And then there was a point when the focus on the individual started to shift a bit and the focus became more about the landscape um, and then the individual in the landscape. And all of this was still looking sort of out from me. And then I have made the work much more personal lately so that it starts from my history, um, something I really know, something that is absolutely authentic to me. And that's as a way to connect with either the people in front of my camera or the audience. After seeing all of Janet's work, it makes me kind of rethink what I want to do. Like, it kind of opened my mind to 
what other possibilities there are in like art and design. There is absolutely always something to learn. I now not only embrace what I might have otherwise thought of as failure, but I seek it out. So I think one of the things that I hope generations that come after me would get from my work is that, um, that community and collaboration and curiosity are just essential to a creative life. Joyce Scott is a fearless artist and she is a courageous commentator on what she sees around her. And that is an example we want to hold up for our students. I come from a long, long line of storytellers and artists and rascals. By the time I was five, my mother, Elizabeth Caldwell Telfer Scott, was teaching me how to bead and how to sew. Nothing in our home was tattered and torn. If it was, it was celebrated. It was embellished with embroidery or beadwork. My name is Joyce J. Scott. I've been a visual artist, a singer, a professor. I do beadwork, I do sculpture, I do jewelry. I'm finally able to say I'm a printmaker and a very bad painter. I'm a sculptress. I am fearless about the arts. So I'm throttled a lot of times about the mysteries and the rotten behavior of human beings. So all the isms are there, all the gender problems, all racism, the xenophobia, you name it. I work about it because it's ever prevalent. And the fact that knowledge is cumulative and we should know better, we know better and we won't do better, is something that consistently messes with my head and runs right out of my fingers into my artwork. And that's part of the reason my work is so dense and, and so gloriously beautiful and time staking, because I want you to be mesmerized and involved with it. Now maybe you'll go home and say, was that a lynching? Gotcha. She lives and breathes art. <laughs> she has a family background. Her mother was a very famous artist and she has taken that history and she's made her own history. My name is Apurva and I'm a junior here at Moore and I'm studying animation and game arts and minoring in business. Joyce, how do you balance that juxtaposition between the material you use and the messages you you tell. One has to be courageous. Not having fear about the genre that you work in, knowing that you probably, if you do something that you think is a failure, it's not, it's an opportunity. So that means that, ah, then maybe I'll see it differently this time. And to go after it. I try to be first person with what I do. And that can be difficult, because look at this personality. I'm an uncertified multiple personality. So I don't know who's going to jump out at any moment. But to be able to live in my castle and just submit to this artistic genie that keeps allowing me to create, that's my thing. That's what I do. One thing I took that really stuck with me is her attitude of being relentless, never stopping. and. I relate with that a lot. Sometimes when you animate something or when you create a story, it feels like you have hit a dead end. That attitude that Joyce has of the art not owning you, but you owning the story or you owning your characters is very important to have and that will stick with me. No one does beadwork like I do beadwork. Now wait a second. Those are the big guns to say that kind of thing. But it's true. I've worked very hard to have quality within everything that I do, to be real about it, to demand respect and to give it, and to wholeheartedly share what I give. So that's how I've made it, because I work as hard as I can to make the truth come out of my artwork. It's very important to honor women because they have been historically underrepresented. When we honor and we consciously make an effort to recognize their talents and their work, it completes the missing pieces of art history that we may not 
know about. Institutions like Moore and, and especially um, honors like the, the Visionary Woman's Award, it really puts an emphasis on how essential it is that voices are heard, that inclusion happens. Moore has a big vision for what we do here, and our Visionary Honors Program is at the center of that. The Visionary Honors Program offers students the opportunity to go beyond the traditional classroom experience while they're here. In nurturing our students to develop themselves as leaders, we're also empowering them to be the artists and the designers they aim to be. I'm in the Leadership Honors Program at my school. The leadership track in particular has been really essential to me because I think it's really helped me come out of my shell and it's really helped me like learn what it is to be a leader and like what skills I want to work on. The academic track of the Visionary Women Honors Program is very discussion-based and uh, we may explore topics that may not be covered in the regular class. So I feel like this program has allowed me to evolve my practice as an artist and I am personally thankful to the people who have donated to this program. Everything we do is art related. The clothing you wear, the food you eat, your eyeglasses, your drawers, everything is created by an artist. So when you are supporting an artist, you're literally supporting your small community and the world at large. When you support this scholarship program, you are donating to support the education of people who are gonna be the next generation of leaders, the people who are gonna shape our collective future. When you invest in the Visionary Honors Program, you're really investing in the future of our world. I know it sounds grandiose, but it's true. These young people are our future.